Joe on the run. Wanted for something he didn't do. And a bounty hunter closes in. Trained him pretty good. That wanted poster says he's dangerous. That's why I'm after him, Sheriff. To prove he's not that kind of a dog. Maybe too late. Jasper, will bring him in. No guarantee what condition. There's just something about a German Shepherd. They're kind of like the Boy Scouts of dogs. You know, trustworthy, loyal, courteous, and kind. That's why, as a 10-year-old boy, I totally bought into the premise of this show. You know, just looking at the NBC Saturday morning lineup during the fall of 1974, I've got to say, the network really knocked it out of the park. There was Land of the Lost, one of my favorites, and Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, and then there was Emergency Plus Four, which was an animated version of the Jack Webb drama about paramedics Gage and DeSoto. But Run Joe Run, well, there are lots of folks out there who think that one may have been the best of the bunch. So the premise of this show is that Joe is falsely accused of a crime for which the penalty is apparently euthanization. Thankfully, Joe is able to escape before being killed and a bounty is put on his head. The bounty was the lofty sum of $200. That felt like a lot back then. Oh, what the heck am I saying? It feels like a lot now. Anyway, Sergeant Will Corey, Joe's trainer, just knows in his heart of hearts that Joe is innocent and pursues him throughout the first season, hoping to find him before the authorities do. And just like that classic TV show, The Fugitive, while on the run, Joe helps the people that he encounters. It's a formula that would be employed a couple of years later with The Incredible Hulk. Speaking of The Incredible Hulk, in an earlier version of this video, channel subscriber Mike Davis suggested that an actual crossover between the two shows, with a special cameo by David Jansen of The Fugitive, would have been the coolest thing ever. You know what, Mike? I totally agree. Among the fine people that Joe helps out were characters played by Christy McNichol and Robbie Rist. You know that cat. He played Cousin Oliver on The Brady Bunch. Other actors who appeared on the show during its two-season run were Christie's brother Jimmy, Donnelly Rhodes, Chuck McCann, and even the great Robert Carradine. So I mentioned earlier that the show had a two-season run, but Sergeant Corey only searched for Joe during the first season. Not sure why the actor who played him, Arch Whiting, left. But when season two rolled around, Sergeant Corey was called back to active duty and was forced to give up on his search for Joe. And in his place, Joe befriended an amiable feller named Josh McCoy, played by actor Chad States. Truthfully, if I have to compare the two seasons, although they were both good, season one was superior. Those first 13 episodes felt like something you might see on primetime television instead of Saturday morning TV. They were just that good. Sadly, you can't watch Run Joe Run much these days. No official DVD, no streaming options, not even an old VHS appears to be available. In fact, the only thing that one can do to relive the good old days of Run Joe Run is to break out the old Viewmaster reels. You can get them on eBay. I know, I know, it's not the same thing, not even close, but hey, at least it's 3D. While I said there were no streaming options, that's actually not quite true. You can find a couple of episodes on YouTube Sadly, as far as I can tell, at least at the time of making this video, there is only one full episode out there that is decent enough quality-wise for someone to enjoy it, and that one can be found on Robbie Rist's own YouTube channel. And if you keep a very sharp eye out, you might even catch a glimpse of Leif Garrett in that episode. All this talk about Robbie Rist, if you've been wondering what happened to the little feller, have I got a video for you. Keep watching this one. And I'll post a link to it at the end of this video. Now back to Run Joe Run. In addition to the Viewmaster reels that I was talking about a few moments ago, the show was popular enough to have its own Kenner action figure, and yes, the standard issue Whitman coloring book. As I was doing my research, I ran across a really awesome Facebook group dedicated to Run Joe Run, and wouldn't you know it, Christine D'Angelo, the daughter of the show's producer William D'Angelo, had posted a message there about her dad. She mentioned that the family apparently has copies of all 26 episodes and that they're just trying to find the right way to market them. Let's hope that they can work something out in the not too distant future. It would be really great to be able to revisit this show again. Based on Christine's message, if the show ever comes to the light of day, it just might be 
more than anything else, an act of love for the dog who played Joe. Because you see, he was the D'Angelo family dog. He was truly loved and is fondly remembered to this very day. One more thing. Way back then, I always thought that the name of the show was at least semi-inspired by the hit song Run Joey Run by David Geddes. Turns out that it might be the other way around as Run Joe Run debuted in 1974, and Run Joey Run wasn't playing on the radio until a full year later in the fall of 1975. So that's it. One last picture. I found this one at that Facebook page that I was talking about earlier. I'll post a link to that group in the description section of this video just in case you want to wander on over and visit. Alright folks, now it's your turn. If you remember Run Joe Run, please, please share your memories in the comment section of this video. And if you enjoyed this little excursion down memory lane, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up. Maybe even share this darn thing on Facebook or Twitter and what the heck. Why not consider subscribing to my channel? I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.